My presentation today it will be entitled as Gender Equity to Equality, an Overview of Females' Biological uh, Estrances. Um, and I want to uh, highlight the difference between these two illustrations, as you can see it here uh, on the screen. Uh, if we'll start with the left one, left-handed uh, uh, illustration, which is representing the brains in the male and uh, female. Do you observe any differences? If we have a look uh, closer to the uh, illustration, yes, there is a difference. If we have a look over the brain size itself, it will be a smaller in females in comparison to males. But if we'll go directly to the right-handed illustration to uh, highlight the difference in body build or body structure between males and females, the uh, observation directly came to our mind that males have bigger body structure in comparison to females. So if we make the comparison between brain and uh, body, it will be by the end equal or balanced uh, in proportion regarding the body and the brain size. But what, what about the function itself? Uh, studies highlighted that women have highly significant thicker cerebral cortexes. A cerebral cortex is the outer liner of the, the brain. Uh, so the female have thicker uh, one in comparison to male. And this is associated to uh, excelling or high scores achievement of females on a variety of cognitive and general intelligence tests. But on the other side, if we have a look over the male's brain, they are bigger in size, as I highlighted in the previous slides. And this is associated regarding the spatial awareness, the decision making, the inhibition and reward process. But I wanted to um, make a rule or um, a concept that we have, like which is called gender rule. What is the meaning of gender rule? It means that not every female have uh, necessity to, to score high uh, in cognitive and general uh, intelligence tests. And the same applies for males that not necessarily that all the, the males have the spatial awareness or decision-making more than the female. And the opposite, maybe women are excelling the spatial awareness and maybe men, men or male are excelling the uh, cognitive and intelligent tests. So this is the gender rule that every rule has its own exception. If we have another look over the brain itself, and uh, I want to highlight a certain part, which is on the left-handed of the screen, highlighting a part of the brain, which is called hippocampus. Well, hippocampus part of the brain, which is concerned with the memory, it's called memory center. And we, if, if we have a comparison between the um, hippocampus in the female and male, we can observe that female have a higher or thicker um, a hippocampus or memory center. So females are absorbing more sensorial information from all the five uh, senses uh, in comparison to the male. So it's excelling for females regarding this memory um, ability. Also, we have the brain right side and two hemispheres, right and left. Uh, the dominant part in, in males are the left side, which is concerned with the analysis, the logic, the facts, the math. While on the right side, which is the dominant part uh, of females, that's why females are always right. So they are concerned with the creativity, the intuition, the art, the creation, and so on. But some uh, researchers are supporting the idea that females are bilateralization. They are not relying only on one hemisphere, but they are using the two hemispheres alternatively or interchangeably, I can say. From another aspect, how the hormones, the sex hormone or gender hormones are affecting on the uh, brain, the uh, gender-based uh, brain. 
For the male, they have the dominant hormone, which is called testosterone. And testosterone affecting the male's uh, characteristics like an exolytic, which are less anxiety, they are less anxiety, they are antidepressant, they are improved in spatial abilities, visual spatial uh, memory. And I'll highlight in a moment what is the meaning of this special abilities. So this is the impact of the gender hormone. And what about the females? Let me highlight what is the meaning of the special abilities first. The special abilities, which is excelling in the uh, male, it's the capacity to understand or um, memorize the objects in 3D rotation, mental rotation. And this, is, uh, this ability is fitting more for the engineers, for the mathematicians, uh, and it's related to a specific part or loop of the brain, which is called the parietal loop. Uh, that's why we had an observation that in one, one in three university professors are female, but one in five professors in the STEM disciplines are females. And the STEM, all of you are aware about the science, the technology, the engineering, and the mathematics. So the male are dominant in these disciplines more than the females due to the special abilities. But how we decrease this gap to uh, increase the uh, uh, involvement or the contribution of females in these disciplines as well? My answer will be at the end of my presentation. Let's go for the female gender uh, dominant hormone, which is called the estrogen, and how it affects the female's brain. It affects by excelling the females in the long-term memory, as I related to the hippocampus part in my previous slides, as well as the orientation and another special ability, uh, which is called navigation or spatial memory. So, so females are better in giving directions um, than uh, males. And lastly is the better verbal memory. That's why we observe that uh, girls are uh, acquiring the language uh, faster and earlier than uh, boys uh, in the early uh, childhood. If we are talking about the job, uh, the contribution in the labor market, of course, multitasking as a characteristics or a skill is very important, especially uh, all the companies and professional bodies are looking for the people who are excelling this multitasking, at least to decrease the human um, resources and make more advantage of the people they have it in their company. So, uh, the opinion or the public opinion or the public concept that women are better in multitasking than men. And we have different professions which are requiring multitasking ability, such as a certified nursing assessment and the nursing sector. It was dominant for females for a long time and lately the males started to enter this sector as well as computer programs, uh, chef, human resources administrator. But it's very important to note that people shouldn't only choose a profession that they like, but it's very important also to choose a, a profession they are capable of performing the necessary tasks to excel. And if we continue the talk about multitasking based on research, they apply different uh, tasks like concurrent and sequential multitasks and compare it among men and women how, how they can perform it. The men perform it slower than women, and when the task is repeated, the performance was better in females among males. And this was supported by different research, but on the other hand, to be fair enough and scientifically uh, representing the point, some other researchers uh, discard this idea through this part and uh, not needing to be stereotyped and needs further research to validate this concept. Another important characteristics in the job as well is the decision making. And decision making, um, it's a vital part in different uh, processes and different situations, either in life or uh, in the job. Uh, the hormones, the gender hormones, plays a very important role regarding the decision making, and it's very dominant um, by the effect of testosterone among males, which is increasing the threshold of conflicts, fears, stresses, and threats. That's why men are very decisive in comparison to females by the dominance of testosterone. Uh, 
And this was verified when they observed the females in the second half of their menstrual cycle, where the progesterone, the females of another dominant hormone, was at, at its less. So the females tend to be lower risk aversion, or in other words, they can take the risks um, to have like financial decisions or any other decision in this part of the menstrual cycle. So decision making is affected by the hormone. But from what we see right now in the uh, general life, in the uh, jobs, uh, in different situations that many females are at the moment very decisive and they can take decisions immediately upon the situation. So what happened? What is the deviation happened to lead for this change? My answer also will be at the end of my presentation. I'm coming very soon, don't worry. For the biological mechanism, I'll highlight only that if, uh, also based on the hormones, the progesterone and estrogen, estradiol is another form of estrogen affecting the pain sensitivity. That's why females are very sensitive in comparison to male, especially for the pain. The testosterone is decreasing the pain sensation as is a protective. Uh, for uh, the pain. So this has to be in mind when dealing with females. So based according to my afore aforementioned facts, what are the best jobs to, um, to be fitting for uh, different genders? For, female, for males, let's start with them. The intelligent dominance for males are logical intelligence, body kinesthetic intelligence, naturalistic, and spatial. And these are the types of jobs that is fitting according to different types of, uh, dom of intelligence. And there is no time to highlight uh, everyone, but I only refer to the bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which is the first job to fit this type of intelligence as physical therapist. Based on my background, I'm relating to male dominant uh, job, uh, which is a physical uh, therapy. That's which is um, uh, verifying or assuring uh, the uh, body, uh, the gender rule, uh, as I mentioned earlier. For the females, what is the gender dominance intelligence? They are very intelligent in linguistics musical, interpersonal, and intrapersonal intelligence. That's why many other um, jobs which are fitting based on uh, the uh, types of intelligent dominance. But as you can see uh, here, for example, radio and TV announcers, journalists, lawyers, copy editors, they are occupied as well by males, which is also verifying and assuring the gender rule uh, concept, as I mentioned. Let's answer the question, why um, or how, let's say, how we narrow the gender gap, how we can increase the contribution of um, females, professors in the STEM disciplines, why some females are, or most of females right now are very decisive um, in, in different situations, especially in jobs, due to two important factors, which are called cultural forces, and the neural plasticity of the brain. So what is the meaning of cultural forces? Cultural forces that the culture in different countries, I want to say all over the world, is different right now, which is forcing the females to contribute um, highly in, uh, in the labor market. So if we compare in the education for girls in Egypt, the number in primary school students grew by 40% from 2011 to 2016. I'm coming to the end of my presentation, Professor Lennon. Um, it was very highly um, prominent in the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic that we, alhamdulillah, we just finished it, hopefully, that the uh, female's contribution revealed a huge contribution at that time, especially in the health sector, like 73% nursing staff in private sector and 91% nursing staff in Ministry of Health, and 42% are doctors. This is based on our Egypt uh, statistics. I'll skip to time. So um, the cultural forces, which is pushing the females to go for the labor market, and not only in Egypt, by the way, globally, 40% of breadwinners' mom are females. 
So the breadwinner moms, moms or the primary source of the, uh, the family incomes are females 40% all over the world. Or in another statistics, statistics, one in every four families, the main supporter financially are moms. So these are force, uh, cultural forces to force the females into the labor markets. And that's why the females became less uh, risk aversion and give decisions immediately. The other factor which is increasing is a gap in uh, in the contributions of females in the STEM disciplines, for example, and in different uh, jobs uh, schemes, it's the brain plasticity or uh, the neural plasticity or the, the plastic capabilities of the brain. The brain is very um, elastic and very adaptable to acquire skills if we repeat it different times. Some resources or researchers are stating that if we repeat a, a specific skill up to 10,000 times, the brain will carve all or, or rewire a new skill in it and the, um, the subject or the participant will be able to do this skill smoothly. So if we uh, involve or contribute the females in the STEM discipline since infancy or since the early childhood from starting of their educational journey, by the end will decrease this gap and by the end will uh, have more contribution of females in different uh, jobs and different tasks. This is the illustration to uh, highlight how the brain can rewire and direct attention towards uh, a new skill to be um, acquired. And this is the beauty of God, uh, which is giving us as a plan B. This is the end of my presentation. I'll end with a take home message. Um, of course, we have to conclude that men and women are different, not only men and women, but every individual are different with different capabilities. So it's very important to give the equity uh, chances. What are they need to have better equal opportunities by the end? I want to thank you all. If you want to keep in touch, this is my ways of uh, communication. Thank you so much.